7 in the semifinals. And now we're here, Scott Catholic and Norris. Jake, I want to bring you in. It's good to be here. We're happy yeah. to be doing this game on overhead, but this is such an interesting matchup because these teams play every single season in the regular season. They'd already played this year, and Scott ended up beating Norris at Norris by three. Yeah, and they're young. I mean, both teams are really young. It's probably what stands out to me about this. I mean, we talked about it. Norris has one senior in their lineup, and he doesn't even see the floor very often. He averages a point per game. Norris has got sophomores, juniors, and a freshman in their starting lineup. And Scott's got a couple more uh, experienced players. I think they've got three or four seniors. But the large majority of each team's scoring producers and contributors defensively and in rebounding, whatever you want to call it, they're all underclassmen, and I think that's a an interesting uh, tidbit here tonight. Yeah, you mentioned Norris yesterday. Norris looked really good, but the, I think they ran into a Scott's Bluff team. Not take anything away from what Norris accomplished. They had a dominating 20-point win. Scott's Bluff was a little fatigued. I actually asked Jimmy Motes about that this morning. I, mean, I said, you guys have played a couple games. One was a grueling one. How are you doing in fatigue? He said, it's time to empty the tank. Absolutely, and Norris is led by their kind of three-headed monster, especially in this tournament. You have the sophomore, Chris Garner, averaging 18.5 points per game in this tournament so far. Had a phenomenal game yesterday where he had 25 points in the win over Scott's Bluff. Then you got Evan Greenfield, just a freshman, averaging 11.5 points per game. And Barrett Boziger, averaging 14 per game in this tournament. He is their kind of their experienced guy as a junior. And meanwhile, Scott had a phenomenal, phenomenal win over Crete in the semifinals. 28 points from the sensation Brock Scholl. 12 from Dylan Van Dyke and 9 from Kyle Cannon. Jake, just talking about this Scott team trying to defend their state title after they won it over Platteview last season. This is interesting. I mean, they just took down the one seed. they got to be flying high, feeling really good about themselves heading into this one. Yeah, I mean, Scott always seems to find a way. Um, you know, it, it, that's the old saying is, you know, Scott's inevitable. Um, and that's what we saw yesterday. They, they played a tough game tough game against Crete, and they came out on the right end of it. I mean, it was a dominating second half, especially fourth quarter. I mean, Crete had an incredible first half. I mean, Aiden McDowell had 21, and then they hold him to three points in the second half. Scott had a really good game plan, and Kyle Juergens, um, I'm sure, is, is able to go after a team that's similar to his uh, in a similar way as he did against Crete yesterday and try and slow down this this Norris team. And that's the thing about Norris is they're young and they're hungry. A lot of other teams can't really say that, but Scott's one that can. This is our pregame for the NSAA State Basketball Championship brought to you by Fleet Feet. We'll take our first break and come back for more pregame coverage of the Class B State Championship game on Old Red between Scott Catholic and Norris next. Welcome back to the NSAA State Basketball Tournament. The Class B Championship game here on Old Red is just about 10 minutes away from tip-off between number four, Scott Catholic, and number two, Norris. I'm Kyle Mathis, joined by Jake Partecki here at Pinnacle Bank Arena in Lincoln. It's been a fun day so far. We just saw the, uh, the Class C1 Championship game finish up in overtime just before yep. this game. That's why we're starting a little bit later because that game went to overtime. Wahoo beating Auburn in OT to win that state title. And now we have this one. This one's going to be fun. Let's talk a little bit about Norris and what they did yesterday against Scott's Bluff in the semis. Chris Garner, like I said, had 25 really great points, dominated down in the paint. He's uh, warming up right in front of us right now. Evan Greenfield, the freshman, 15 points playing in his first state tournament. He's played excellent basketball. And Barrett Boziger, 13 points in that win. Jake, I know uh, Scott's Bluff came into that game very tired. I mean, a long travel. They played the night game the night before uh, against Omaha Ron Colley. And Norris definitely had a ton of just high energy plays high energy players but they dominated down in the paint with chris garner jr he had 25 points just destroyed scott's Bluff down there but now you see a scut having a guy down low like brock shoal who can shoot the three but he can also go in the post so now norris is gonna have to be prepared to guard a guy like him yeah shoal impressed me yesterday he was really good um you know he wasn't just down low i mean he was shooting threes i think he knocked down four triples yesterday and, and scut started so hot from three that's what makes him so hard to defend is he's able to score down low but if you're going to take him out of the paint okay he can shoot the three as well i mean that's kind of become the ideal big man in 2024 basketball if it's high school college nba whatever you want a big man that can also shoot threes and that's what brock Scholl is now i mean you could make the case that chris garner jr is similar i mean norris will run him down in the post every now and then you could say the same thing about a guy like evan greenfield and they both can shoot the three so they have the weapons to combat him but uh, he, he's tough to guard no doubt 
And these two teams, like I said, had played before this season. Scott beat Norris 60-57 to at Norris not too long ago, about a month ago on February 6th. Chris Garner led the scoring with 17 points. Greenfield had 14. And those were the two guys that really stood tall for Norris. But Scott was able to to come away with the win. And, Jake, you said that you were able to talk a little bit before the game to head coach of Norris, Jimmy Motes, and how he was uh, pretty confident in his team heading into this game because he said that it was just uh, a field goal and a free throw away from, from tying that one up in that first meeting. Yeah, they said it was a difference in the game, um, and it was. You know, you know, it's kind of similar to we talked about this yesterday with Crete and Norris, or excuse me, uh, Crete and Scott. The difference in that semifinal last year was a 10-0 run to start the ball game by Scott, and Cree probably was the better team in that one. Now, that being said, I mean, Norris can't allow a big run early to Scott here because that's that's when things get dangerous. I mean, you don't want to get behind in the state tournament game by a lot. Um, this Norris team, they got the weapons to try and make a, a little run at this. I mean, he, I, that's the other thing I asked him about was fatigue, and he told them empty the tank. I mentioned that in the first segment. I think it's what we're going to see from Norris today. Well, this game on Old Red, the NSA state championship game in Class B, brought to you by Titan Nutrition in downtown Hickman. Brett Bernheide with Nutrient Ag Solutions, West Highway 41 near Adams, Fillmore County Hospital, Trusted Hearts Touching Lives, and Plaza Rich Dental in Beatrice for the smiles in your world. Well, Jake, I kind of, this is a really crazy stat for Norris here. Since 2005, Norris has played Scott Catholic 15 times because they do play them every season in the regular yeah. season, both being Class B teams. Norris is 3-12 and against Scott. Those three wins coming between 2010 and 2014 and Norris has now lost 11 straight games to Scott that they've played dating all the way back to 2014 that is something that probably is a little daunting to Norris coming into this game and you'd hope or that they would hope that they want to break that streak right here and win a state title for the first time in over 20 years yeah I mean maybe it means they're due I mean that's 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 the one way to look at it is maybe they're due for a win over over Scott I do think though the team that Norris has now was better than any of the teams in the last 10 years. I mean, they, they obviously had Trey DeVoe a season. They got to the state tournament, got upset early. That was a very good team. But I think this team, the blend, the drive, the, the kind of no fear of failure, the, the no expectations, I think that has helped Norris tremend, uh, tremendously. So we'll see what they do here today. But this Norris team, I think, is better than a lot of those teams in the past. Yeah, and they're a young team, too, like yeah. we mentioned earlier. Only one senior on the lineup. They're going to be good for years to come, especially with a great freshman like Evan Greenfield, who has been playing amazing basketball in this state tournament. This is our pregame show brought to you by Fleet Feet. After this, we will have the starting lineups and tip-off of the state championship game between Scott Catholic and Norris next on All Red. All right, welcome back to the NSAA State Basketball Class B Championship game brought to you by Johnson County Hospital, Heartland Bank member FDIC, Beatrice Auto Sales, Downtown Family Vision and Wilbur, and Gold Crush Retirement Center. Both of these teams, Norris and Scott, coming into this game on some winning streaks, like usual when you have to make a state tournament run. And Scott comes into this game on a solid eight-game winning streak, and Norris is on a five-game winning streak. Norris's last loss came against Scott back in early February, a three-point loss. Meanwhile, Scott went on a three-game losing streak before they started their winning streak. Well, now it's went completely dark here in the arena. They're getting ready to announce the starting lineups here. And this game is going to be good. I mean, there's a ton of anticipation heading into this game. Norris hasn't won a state title since 2003. They haven't actually made a state championship game since 2003. This is their first state championship made since then. But Scott, I mean, this is familiar territory for them, Jake. Yeah, they've been here a lot. I mean, they've, they've been here a lot, and they're used to this stage. I mean, there's a certain benefit to that of knowing how the weekend with state works because you've got to do the extra media stuff. You've got to – there's more TV stations wanting to interview you. There's more, uh, like we're seeing right now, the light show and, and the pregame hype video. you got to film that the, day, the night before the game. There's more games to watch. You're playing games at different times. That's an advantage that I think a lot of people don't think about that Scott knows. Yeah, well, Scott, this, their student section to our right has gotten more fans than they did yesterday. Meanwhile, Norris's student section to our left was jumping up and down, getting hype. I mean, these two teams are, they, they know each other very, very well. But like I said, Norris hasn't beat Scott in 11 tries. And Scott looking for their third state championship in the last five seasons. They won one in 2019-2020. 
and they won one last season too, looking to defend their title. So we'll see what happens, and we'll take one more break, one more short break, and then head to the start of this tip-off game between Class B state state runner-ups Scott Catholic and Norris on O'Reb. Welcome back to the NSAA State Basketball Class B Championship game brought to you by Crete Area Medical Center, Wilburn Friend Medical Clinics, Titan Nutrition in downtown Hickman, and Brett Bernheide with Nutrient Ag Solutions, West Highway 41 near Adams. That's our pregame show brought to you by Fleet Feet. I'm Kyle Mathis, joined by Jake Bartecki. They're just announcing the uh, non-starters for Scott Catholic right now, but we do have the starters for both teams, and we'll read them out to you. For Norris, nothing changed over the last two days from their original starting lineup against Bennington. They're led by their junior, six foot one junior number four, Barrett Boziger, a six foot sophomore number five, Alex Small, a six foot three sophomore number ten, Chris Garner, who had 25 points yesterday in the win over Scotts Bluff. A 6'2 freshman, keyword freshman, playing in a state title game, Evan Greenfield, number 22, and finishing it off as a 6'3 junior, number 23, Jarrett Behrens, who hasn't really scored too many points, but he's been kind of good, uh, just an overall good player, just to pass the ball around and swing it around and play good defense. Yeah, he knocked out a couple triples yesterday. I think Norris went 2 of 8 or something like that from the fir- in the first half, and I think he hit the only ones, but you're right. I mean, he's just, he's been good for six seven points a game with a couple of threes but you know the thing is with guys like that that's how how norris plays i mean they don't have garner jr is obviously averaging around 15 a game but they don't have a ton of guys outside of that that are going to give you 20 or 30 they've got more guys like barons that are going to give you six to eight yeah yeah and i mean barons yeah like 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 jake said he's not having a bad tournament at all it's just that norris has three guys in greenfield boziger and uh, Garner, who scored a ton of points per game, kind of overshadows his play sometimes wh- when people only look at the points and not the total stats. Yeah, I mean, those are the three, right? I mean, you think about it, it coming into this year, it was Garner Jr. and, and Bosiger, right? Yeah. Um, and Evan Greenfield really wasn't in the equation until the second half of the season. And now he's probably become, as you said, one of the three, you know, the three-headed monster for this Norris team. One of the best freshmen I've seen in class being a long time. Yeah. Let's go through the lineup for Omaha Scott, who didn't change anything either from their starting lineup yesterday against Crete. They're led by their 6'3 junior point guard, number three, Kyle Cannon, a 5'11 senior, number 10, Will O'Darty, a 6'1 junior, number 12, Dylan Van Dyke, who had an incredible 12 point game yesterday in the win over Crete. A 6'8 sophomore, number 50, George Siebel. And finishing it off is a 6'8 junior, an absolute stud, number 44, Brock Scholl, who had 28 points in the win over Crete, that upset win yesterday in the Class B semifinals. So how did these two teams get here? Well, let's get through that right now. So let's start on Thursday. It was Omaha Scut beating Elkhorn in the four versus five matchup, 69 to 61. They would go on to the semifinals and beat number one Crete, and the Cardinals are only loss of the season. A 55-47 win yesterday in the state semifinals. What about Norris? They came into this tournament 22-2. and Scott was one of their two losses on the season. They lost that game by three. Well, they beat Bennington in the quarterfinals on Thursday, 61-56 to in overtime. And then they took down Scott's Bluff easily, an 18-point win yesterday in the semifinals, 65-47. to That's how these two teams have got here. Scott, the defending champions in Class B, and Norris, a team that hasn't won the state title, for over 20 years, but they are the higher seed, and they've had an incredible season so far. Scott, their coach Kyle Jurgens came up with an amazing game plan yesterday to take down Ada McDowell of Crete, shut him down in the second half, and then Norris is led by Jimmy Motes, who is confident in his team's ability to try and win a state championship. We're ready to get started here. Scott, once again, in the road black uniforms with green stripes down the side, And Norris is in their home whites like they've wore all tournament. They are ready to get started, Jake. This one should be fun, and the Scott fans. You fired up? You feeling ready? Yeah, I'm I'm ready for this one. This is, we knew it could have been a collision course. We knew Scott, the Scott is inevitable saying is now a factor. Yeah. And we knew Norris had a good chance of making it here. Well, now it's whether Norris can finish the job or not. They both have young lineups. I think we're ready to get started here. Chris Garner. We'll go up against Brock Scholl to get this one started. Scholl has got a little bit of a height advantage from Garner. Garner's only six foot three, and Scholl is six foot eight. And they're jump, and they're gonna tip the ball off here in the state championship game in Pinnacle Bank Arena. Here we go. We're underway. Scott wins the tip. 
and it's Kyle Cannon bringing it ahead. And we are underway in the Class B state championship game on Old Red. Scott with the ball first. Dylan Van Dyke right side. Getting well defended by Alex Small. Swings it back out to Brock Scholl. Left side now for Will O'Darty. O'Darty dribbling it around. Drives it inside. O'Darty takes it to the rim. Great defense by Barrett Boziger. And Chris Garner, who else but him, grabs the rebound. Yeah, comes Chris Garner Jr. has been good at seven rebounds per game. I saw at state tournament this year. Yeah. Up ahead comes the Titans now with Garner finding Boziger. Left side, jumps inside, kicks it back out to Small. Alex Small, left corner. Here's Barron's a three. Will not go. So Barron's got a good look, couldn't hit the shot. O'Darty grabs the board, and Scott can push. Minute into the first quarter, no score. As here's Zeibel down low. Excuse me, Zeibel. Zeibel posting up down low, gets doubled up, turns around, sees that he has space, and puts up the left-handed floater, and it's in. Scott leads at 2 nothing. Right from that Big Ten logo in the paint. Zebel, if he has a good game, Jake, that would be an interesting uh, predicament. It would be Zebel and Scholl down low for Scott. That would be a hard duo to stop. Well, we talked about it. The height advantage for Scott ha that Scott has on Norris is a factor, no doubt. Here's Garner in the post. Garner swings it out to Small. Back out to Boziger. Now in the left corner for Greenfield. Drives baseline. Gets the step. Kicks it to Barron's right corner. Wide open three. And an air ball. And now we get a reach-in, and it's going to be a reach-in foul on the rebound by Zeebel, who got fouled. I think they're going to call this on Greenfield. 0 for 2 so far for 3 for Barons. And Norris want to get the three-point shooting off quickly, and uh, they're already struggling from the three-point line. So they're going to get the foul called on. It is Greenfield. You don't want him to be in foul trouble for Norris. Now it's O'Darty bringing it ahead. You usually see Kyle Cannon as the true point guard, but not today. He has the ball, though, near that Huskers logo at center court. Gets a screen. Cannon going inside. Kicks it in the corner to Van Dyke. Back outside. Open three from the right side for Scholl. And it's short. He was on fire from three against Crete. Greenfield grabs the board. Comes to the rim. Greenfield getting trapped underneath. Bounce pass to Garner. In the paint. Garner pump faking. Going up for the shot. No good. Rebound inside by Zebel. And Norris is 0 for 3 to start the game on field goals. Two minutes in, 2 nothing. Scott. It's a nice move by Greenfield, though. I mean, another senior move. Wide open 3 from the left side for Scott. O'Darty hits it. And it's Scott up 5 nothing. Norris showing their uh, championship game jitters already here. They look a little bit nervous out there. They need to get settled into this one. As here's Alex Small bringing it up, trailing 5 nothing. Greenfield swinging it around. It's Small again on the left side now. Small motioning for Boziger to move through the paint. He set a screen for Greenfield, left corner. Evan Greenfield makes a move, goes inside, kicks it to Barron's. Right corner was wide open. Didn't want to shoot, though. The pass inside is intercepted. It's Van Dyke. Bounce pass ahead to Zebel. Scott gets a steal. Zebel the other way. Oh, and Garner met him at the rim and blocked him. Garner now to Small. Norris pushing, puts up the shot, and it's a foul. It's a blocking foul on Kyle Cannon. He... Set his feet, but I think he was in the restricted arc, and that's going to be a block and not a charge. What's one thing I've said is key at state when you're on offense? Be decisive. Jarrett Barons didn't want to shoot that because he missed the two already, and then now Norris is 0 of 2, but he was wide open, and instead he forces a pass to his left that was easily taken away. you got to be decisive with what you're going to do on offense at the state tournament. Alex Small, first free throw here. Scott fans getting loud to our right. First free throw by Smalls. Good. And Norris is on the board here in the state championship game. It takes them two minutes and 57 seconds. We're also going to see a new substitute in the game for Scott. Is that Rip Hamilton out there with the mask? <laughs> <laughs> this is uh, Gideon Linderman who got hit in the nose yesterday against Crete. Had a bloody nose and now he's wearing a mask today. Wow. Second shot here. We'll also see Bornschlegel check into the game. Josh Bornschlegel for Norris. Second shot for Small. Hits the front of the rim and bounces in. And it's 5-2, to two, Scott. Alex Small checks out of the game. And it's McCoy Fulkert's in. He has clutch genes, ice in his veins when it comes down to the stretch, McCoy Fulkert's. He's hit a clutch, you know, he's hit a few clutch shots uh, in the state tournament and district finals over his two seasons at Norris. Now the key, key factor there, two seasons, just a sophomore. Yeah. Story of this Norris team. Here's Kyle Cannon on the left, swings it to the right. O'Darty pump fakes. Drives inside, O'Darty puts up the shot, it's blocked inside by Boziger. Rebound comes to Bornschlegel, and Norris can attack. Two for six 
from the field for Scott. 0 for 3 for Norris. 5 to 2. Skyhawks on top. Here's Greenfield right side. Going inside the paint. Posting up. Greenfield. Tough uh, fadeaway shot. Will not fall. Good defense down low by Linderman. Up ahead comes Van Dyke on the board. Rushes it coast to coast. And Garner comes from behind and takes it down and blocks him. Up ahead, Bornschlegel. The pace of this game starting to ramp up. Garner in the post puts up the shot. Can't get it to fall. Rebound underneath. And Van Dyke gets another rebound. That's a second. Oh, and coming coast to coast and dunking it down is Scholl, who hypes up the crowd. Nice dunk underneath by Brock Scholl, who's got his first two points of the state championship game. Pretty good drive there. Norris is, is having a tough time dealing with what Scott's throwing. They're throwing a zone in the paint, and they just haven't gotten any open looks down there. Here's Greenfield trying to go underneath. Kicks it back out to Garner. Drives it in with his right. Puts it up. Oh, a tough miss. Got his own board. Garner puts it up. Got a second rebound, and Garner puts it in underneath and lays it up and in. 7-4, to four, Scott. Three and a half to play in the first. Kyle Cannon now the other way for Scott. They slow it down. This, the tempo in this game is completely just a fast-paced, high-velocity tempo. You know, it's, I feel like it's, a sec, it's a favoring Scott Moore. That pass from Van Dyke stolen by Fulkerts. Fulkerts bounce pass to Greenfield underneath, and they go coast-to-coast coast on the fast break. Greenfield lays it in. 7-6, Scott Norris has fought back. Three minutes to go in the first. And that was just another senior-level play by Evan Greenfield. Got to the open wow. space. There's a senior-level play by Kyle Cannon, who's just a junior. Got separation at the free-throw line from Greenfield and put up the mid-range shot and got it to go. 9-6, to six, Scott up by three. Norris hasn't had the lead yet today. Here's Greenfield right side now. Over to the right corner for Folkerts, looking for the post play to Boziger. Decides to go back out to Bornschlegel. Now the left. It's, it's uh, the drive by Garner. Goes underneath. Oh, what a move by Garner. Went underneath Scholl and put in the layup. Up ahead quickly comes Scott Linderman, coast to coast. And it's a blocking foul and one. Linderman gets it to go. It's going to go on Boziger, who tried to draw the charge. But just like Scott on the other end, he was in the restricted arc. And one for Scott. Yeah, and Chris Garner Jr. fell down after he made that, so he was slow getting back up the other way. So. That was transition. Scott had numbers to get that. We got a great game here in the Class B Championship game. Timeout on the floor. 2.26 to go in the first quarter. Scott up 11-8 over Norris on all red. Welcome back to the NSAA State Basketball Championship game for Class B. Brought to you by Smith Auto in Pawnee City. Learn more at smithautoine.com. Friend Fertilizer, your rinky dealer and friend. Jonna Austin, your shelter insurance agents in Fairbury. Prairie View Industries, North Highway 15 in Fairbury. And Tim Hartley with Hebron Tree Service. Both teams, Norris and Scott, getting their offense going so up, so far after slow starts. Three for three on their last three field goal attempts for both teams. And it's 11 to eight, Scott in the lead, but not a good start for Norris, at least on the offensive end of the floor. 0 for two from three, three for 10 from the field, 30% start this game. Yeah, you know, it's weird that the, the pace it was slow to start. I mean, they didn't have anybody making shots, but now both teams have made their last three field goals. We got one at the line here for Scott as well. Yeah, well, Norris started the game 0 for 7 from the field. Now they're 3 for 10 after going 3 for 3. Here's Linderman, free throw for the and one play. No good. It's 11-8 Scott. Greenfield grabs the board and pushes it quickly. Greenfield brings it ahead. Hans Myers in the game for Norris, newly checked in. And also, Alex Small back in the game. Drives it in. The paint steps up quickly, and he's fouled on the floor. A blocking foul here. It's going to go on. Looks like this is Wissink. Ah, oh, was it Wissink? Okay, well, so I was going to say, Scholl is in the area, too, and if that was one on Scholl, right, that's big for Norris. Foul is there on Carter Wissink, the sophomore. So you're going to see Garner check back into the game for Greenfield. Garner gets the ball immediately. Oh, touch pass sick. inside off the inbound, and the touch pass from Garner finds Alex Small, who is the inbounder. And he lays it up and in wide open down low, 11 to 10. What a great play, Jake. How about that play? What a great up play. By Jimmy Motes. That was <laughs> nice. That was an incredible touch pass by Garner, too. Now here comes the drive and the kick. Linderman gives it out now to Kyle Cannon, left side. Gets a screen. Drives it on his left. Cannon inside. Blocked underneath by Bornschlegel. And they actually call an offensive foul. They call an offensive foul on 
Scott, I, I think that was a push off on Cannon. Yeah, another big factor. Yeah. Four blocks now by Norris in the game. That is, you know, we talked about the height, right? How's Norris going to be able to combat uh, Scott's height with Wissick and Scholl and these guys that are towering over guys like Alex Small and Barrett Bosiker and McCoy Folkerts? But man, four blocks here early. I would not have pegged that. I would have pegged four for the game. Yeah. Well, four for four for Norris on their last four field goals. 11 to 10, Scott leads it over Norris, and here comes Alex Small. Norris can take their first lead of the game with a bucket on this possession. Folkerts to Bornschlegel, top of the key. Gets a screen, finds Hansmeyer underneath. That's going to be a blocking foul. That was almost a great play by Van Dyke, but he was in the restricted arc again. He's got his hands on his head. He does not agree with the call as the pass... Was it down low to Hansmeyer? And uh, Hansmeyer will go to the line for two shots. A chance to give Norris their first lead. The reason why it's so loud with yeah. Booge right now. The Booge raining down behind us because the Scott fans were right behind us. Yeah, they, they missed that one. I, mm. that was, he had his feet set. That was a charge. Hansmeyer misses the first free throw. And the best he can do is tie the game. Norris was perfect from the line prior to that point. Now here is the second shot by Hansmeyer. Shooting with the... Uh, Scott student section right behind the basket, but he gets that one to roll in, and the game is tied at 11. One and a half minutes to play in the first quarter. 11 all between Norris and Scott, the Class B state championship game here on Old Red. Sort of surprised Norris has stayed with man-to-man. -man. I mean, it's worked. They've kept Scholl at bay, but uh, interesting game plan by Jimmy Motes. Linderman put up a shot from the Big Ten logo, came up short. Alex Small grabs the board and pushes it ahead. Now it's Hansmeyer back over to Small. Small with his hand motions. Let's slow it down, guys, and work a set here. Here is the drive by Garner. Garner gets to the free throw line. Kicks it back up to the left for Bornschlegel. Now to the left corner. It goes for Small. Back to Bornschlegel in the left corner. Gets a screen from Small. Bornschlegel. Step back. Hounded at the free throw line by Van Dyke. Now in the left corner for Small. Six on the shot clock for Norris. Small will take it himself in the post. Puts up the tough shot. Great defense by Van Dyke. No good on the shot. 40 seconds to go in the pass ahead by O'Darty. was deflected out of bounds by Fulkers at the scorer's table. And it'll go to Scott with 40.3 seconds to go. Eight seconds between shot clock and game clock here at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, so, field comes back in, Smalls out. Yeah, so Scott can't hold it for the final shot here. I mean, I'm sure they'll take as long as they can to do that. Uh, but it's, I'm going to be interested to see what Kyle Jurgens draws up here. I mean... Norris is tied up Scholl. Do you know how many points Scholl has right now? He just, at the, he just got that one dunk. Two, so, yeah. I mean, that was in transition. He hasn't scored anything out of a pure set. Siebel trapped near the half court line. Needs assistance. Finds Van Dyke. And instead, it's going to be a timeout call by Kyle Jurgens as they were getting trapped near that half court line. And then Van Dyke comes off limping. So we'll see how much of a factor that becomes. Maybe he just got a stinger there. 25 seconds to play in the first quarter. We'll be back for the remainder of the first after this on Old Red 11-11 between Norris and Scott on Old Red. Welcome back to the NSAA Basketball Tournament on Old Red, brought to you by Fillmore County Hospital, Trusted Hearts Touching Lives, Plaza Rich Dental and Beatrice for the Smiles in Your World, and Johnson County Hospital. 25 seconds to go. Eight-second difference between shot and game clock here, and Scott has the ball out of the timeout with Van Dyke. Drives it with his left. Slings it across to the right corner. Wide open three for O'Darty. That one won't fall. Greenfield grabs the board. And Norris has 10 seconds to get a playoff. Folkerts to the left corner. Back out to the left side. Folkerts a three. Got it. Five seconds to go. Here's O'Darty. The pass ahead blocked by Folkerts. The clock's going to run out. No shot for Scott to end the first quarter. Makai Folkerts puts in a big shot to end the first quarter. And Norris leads it 14-11. to 11. Over Scott. We'll be back for the second quarter right after this on Old Red. 